Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today for the ALA Chapter Counselor Candidate Forum. My name is Kelsey Dorado and I'm the Director of Communication and Marketing at NYLA and I'll also be serving as your host this afternoon. With us today we have Jen Ferris, Cassie Guthrie and Brian Hasbrook, the 2019 candidates for ALA um, Chapter Counselor. To pose questions to our candidates you can type them into the questions tab. Attendee microphones are muted, this ensures that all of our speakers can be heard clearly. Thanks again and let's get started. Our first question is, what makes you excited to be on NYLA Council? And Jen, we'll start with you. Thank you, Kelsey. Um, hi, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Um, so I'm excited to be on Council because there is always a new energy each year when it, the new Council begins. And I, I truly do look forward to working with the new leadership team and to continue the programs and ideas of our past council members and president initiatives. Um, I do learn an awful lot from colleagues and we've got a lot of people in the state and it's just another opportunity to meet new people and hear their ideas. And you know, who doesn't like another meeting to add to their schedule? <laughs> Thank you. That's a joke. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> and Cassie, what about you? Well, I'm not going to echo what Jen just said about needing another meeting to uh, to go to, but I, I will say that um, I'm interested in this particular position on the NILA Council because the ALA chapter counselor position really acts as the conduit between the New York Library Association and our national association. And having been involved uh, statewide with initiatives through both NILA and New Yorkers for Better Libraries for about the past 10 years, I'm excited at this point to broaden my perspective kind of to the national stage. Um, I started this last year, I was asked to serve on a review panel for uh, IMLS National Leadership Grants, and it was really interesting to me uh, not only to see the diversity, you know, geographically across the country of what people in our profession were looking at, but also the perspective of um, library schools, what they were, were focused on, and I, I see ALA for me as being the next logical step, so that's pretty much what makes me excited about the position. Thank you. And Brian, what about you? Uh, yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, so what makes me interested is I served on a PLA committee for a couple years, and I found it uh, exciting uh, in the same way that, that Jen and Cassie mentioned, just to, to get exposed to things that are different than uh, what, what we deal with in Brooklyn. Um, and I think it's important that we have voices on council and at ALA that, that deal with the kinds of, uh, you know, uh, underserved communities that, that I've worked in. And it's just really, I mean, council, this is my first year on it. It's interesting. It's kind of cool to hear how, you know, the sausage is made. And yeah, it's just neat to get to know people. Uh, and I think I would, I would be a good representative for NYLA. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and our next question is, how has your experience as a librarian in particular prepared you to be the ALA chapter counselor? And Cassie, we'll start with you. Okay. Um, well, I think uh, that the diversity of my experience working in different geographic areas of New York State is, is one of the things that um, well prepares me. I worked in Westchester County for about 10 years. I've been up in the Rochester area since then. I've also been a public library system director. I've been a library director. I've been a frontline librarian. I'm very active and involved professionally with advocacy, funding, legislation, and you know, working as the NYLA treasurer. I'm just coming off of that term to ensure that NYLA remains a strong and financially stable organization. Um, so I think that's, you know, kind of understanding the perspectives, as Brian just mentioned, um, you know, not only of my own area, but across the state and being able to translate that now up to the national level. Thank you. And Brian, what do you think? Wait, Kelsey, what was the question again? I'm sorry. No, that's I, okay. I changed windows and I can't see it. That's <laughs> fine. Um, how has your experience as a librarian prepared you to be ALA chapter counselor? Well, it has forced me to confront things about myself that I didn't know about in terms of just our culture, right? Internalized racism, homophobia, et cetera, and it has, has forced me to become an advocate and to deal with situations that are thorny and difficult. Uh, just yesterday, I had to deal with a, 
uh, a mother who is trying to deal with with housing and, and just getting food. And I actually think that a lot of the issues facing our profession are not not that dissimilar in a lot of ways in terms of there's a lot of different people who have a lot of really strongly held positions and how do we advocate but not you know how do we disagree without being disagreeable how do we get what we want to you know without being rude or anything to that effect right and i i'm sure that that is what we've been doing uh and i think i think that working uh, first on Rikers Island in prison libraries and now on my second community uh, neighborhood branch. Uh, I, I have been very lucky to see, you know, the noble architecture that is our profession, right? Helping people and anything I can do to help advocate for that and push that, I'm game to do. So thank you. Thank you. And Jen, how has being a librarian helped prepare you? Um, so for the past three years I have been on ALA Council and I've seen, um, you know, some interesting topics and um, bad behavior um, sometimes happening on the council floor. And, um, you know, I, I take the time to like absorb information um, and try and come up with a good solution by talking to other people. So. Um, as a librarian, um, right now I'm currently working as a public librarian, you know, you have to have active listening skills and you have to have empathy and sometimes you have to have a really thick skin and make really hard decisions, um, you know, in my day-to-day -day job and that translates into what happens on the chapter council floor as well. Um, I also, some of the other, so I don't have... Um, experience in working in city libraries, but I have been um, a system. I worked at the system for 17 years. I was a medical librarian and academic. Um, I have worked in an academic library. Um, I recently stepped away from the system library because I really wanted to start working with the people and implementing a lot of the uh, ideas and programs that have been, that I've learned about um, through my um, involvement with ALA and PLA in the past 10 or so years. Um, so, you know, in, in general, you know, counsel, you have to, you have to hold yourself accountable um, and you have to be organized and do a lot of work ahead of time. Um, it is all about you represent New York State, but it's also listening to everybody else's ideas and trying to get a different lens on um, other people's point of views to make decisions. Um, and, uh, you know, in general, try not to be hypocritical and practice modeling or other um, things that have prepared me for being an ALA chapter counselor. Great. That's Thank it. you. Thank you. Um, and our next You're question. Welcome is could you all just give us kind of a brief rundown on your history of engagement with ALA? And Brian, we'll start with you. Sure. Um, uh, compared to Jen and Cassie, I'm very new at librarianship. It's my second career. Uh, so I have, what did I do? So I was on PLA for, or I was on a PLA committee uh, for two years, which just finished and was pretty cool because you got to, they had this new award helping communities something something um but the idea is you find uh, libraries are nominated for how they help their communities in emergencies and it was, you know it's just i i think sometimes new york especially we can be a little insular uh when we look at things and you just see all this amazing work people are doing and it inspires you to do uh to redouble your efforts right um and i just finished up being a member of the ala mentoring program uh but yeah, I'm, I'm always looking for, for new ways to engage ALA. Thank you. And Jen, um, how have you been engaged with ALA in the past? Um, so I started off um, as a public library association. Um, where did it start? I was like a conference sub subcommittee member, which helped plan the Indianapolis PLA. And from there, um, 
I guess I was fortunate enough to be asked on different committees. So I was on the PLA Leadership Development Committee for two years. Um, I've, for the past three years, I've been on a PLA annual um, conference planning. So that's for the ALA annual conference, all the PLA um, committees that have been on, um, on the slate to be pre presented there. I'm currently on a web content working group, um, figuring out how to keep the PLA website up to date. Um, I've been an award chair, and then through, you know, three years ago, I was fortunate to, fortunate enough to be asked to be a nominee for this current position, and I won the election. So I've been an ALA chapter counselor, um, and during that time period, I was asked to be on the PLA and budget assembly, which is um another review um group of the um, ala budget thank you and cassie how have you been involved with ala uh i've been a member i think it's going on close to 20 years of ala but the majority of my experience has been with uh, the public library association division um I have gone to every conference since 2006 and was lucky enough last summer to participate in uh, PLA's Inclusive Internship Initiative, where I worked with uh, a member of our teen advisory board. And the goal of the Inclusive Internship Initiative is to open up diversity in our profession by trying to um, interest high school students specifically in careers in librarianship or working in libraries. So that was a, a pretty uh, powerful experience. But as far as the kind of um, background at ALA that Jen has, I, I don't possess that. I hope that I have the opportunity to learn a little bit more about it and participate um, in the American Library Association. Thank you. And our next question is, in your opinion, what is the largest challenge facing ALA today? And Jen, we'll start with you. <laughs> Reorganization and downsizing. Um, it's a massive organization. As I mentioned, um, in 2017, I was asked to join the Planning and Budget Assembly, and I think I att I've attended like three or four of those meetings, and I still don't understand why there's another advisory group. There seems to be a lot of eyes on many things in, in ALA that do very similar things. So. In the past year, they've been talking about restructuring um, the whole organization and making it, it's a member-driven um, organization, um, trying to be more transparent while um, pleasing everybody. Um, so that's one of their big challenges, um, as well as hiring a new executive director. So they've also been without an executive director, um, their assistant stepped in for the past couple of years and we're hoping in January 2020 that there's a new executive director there. Thank you. And Cassie, what do you see as one of the biggest challenges for ALA? Uh, well, I, I have to echo what Jen just said. Um, you know, with a governing board of something like 186 members, uh, 100 at large, the 50 plus chapter counselors. It's a it's a very large um, organization, and I know from uh, Jen's report at NILA Council meetings that they're undergoing this comprehensive review and study of how the organization is governed, how membership participates with it. Um, so I think that uh, that's obviously a very big challenge. Another uh, thing that um, I recently was asked to be involved with. Um, was that the Government Relations Department of the American Library Association is working on a new structure to reach out to uh, Congress people, Congress persons, um, to talk about issues that are important to the profession on a national level and trying to organize uh, strategically through the states in order to do that. So I think, um, again, going back to IMLS and, and the current situation um, in Washington, D.C., I think that national funding uh, and efforts that the American Library Association is taking to secure and stabilize uh, that federal funding is, is an important challenge that they face. Thank you. 
And Brian, what do you see as the biggest challenge? Well, first, I would love for them to move their headquarters to Brooklyn, but that's not going to happen probably. I would say the biggest challenge that ALA faces is the one that a number of my peers talk about all the time is why does it cost so much and what's going on? So many of us look at these, we get the, the we get so many emails from them and so much stuff is going on, but it's very unclear sometimes what is happening and why does it cost so much to be part of the organization? Uh, that is something that I would love to to have a, a voice on and, and to help guide. Thank you. And we have one more question in the queue, so I'll ask everyone to um, write any more questions that you have into the questions tab. And our next question is, in your approximation, what's the most important New York-based issue to represent on the ALA Council? And Cassie, we'll start with you. We'll move over to Brian and we can come back to Cassie in a second. Let me know if you need me to repeat it. Sure, um, I'm, I'm happy to jump in there. You said, what is the most important New York-based issue? Yes, correct. Yeah, I, I, I mean, at least as someone who's a direct public service facing staff member, um, I would like to see ALA speak more towards um, homelessness. Uh, this is something that I deal with every day. I realize that may not be true for the entire state, um, but as an urban librarian, I would like to see them take on issues uh, in a meatier way. Uh, I know that they did that with Ryan Dowd uh, in his Librarian's Guide to Homelessness, but there's been some pushback on that. Um, I would like to see like more practical training, just like webinars, stuff that doesn't cost so much money. I am well aware that it is difficult to coordinate things and it costs money to have to run things. Uh, but oftentimes, you know, to circle back for a second to what the last question was, I just feel like I'm constantly being being bled of money every time I interact with ALA, uh, and it's disheartening. And I know that for a number of us, when I get together with other other peers who are new in the profession, we start to just disengage and go, "What's what's the point? Like, what are we doing?" Um, and that's part of the reason that I would like. I, I think that I would be a good selection for this position because. I don't think that my my thoughts here are that unique. Um, so thanks. Thank you. And Cassie, we'll come back to you. Cassie, I think we might be having a little bit of technical difficulty. <laughs> Uh, we'll pop over to Jen while we figure that out. Okay. And Cassie, if you want to test your mic while I'm talking, wait for me to pause, but you can go ahead and do that. Um, so um, I agree, Brian, homelessness is definitely a huge issue. And um, But I, I'm going to add another layer to that. It's, it's um, something I was on a call yesterday um, talking about um, equity, inclusion, and diversity for ALA counselors, and um, some of the things we've already talked about on this call, some of the points that we've brought up about um, active listening and empathy is skill sets, for example, that we need to have, but um, we talked about this also during our NILA council meetings is um, in order to have diversity and equity in our profession, there needs to be recruiting at some level um, so that our libraries and our profession can reflect the rest of society. So I think that that's an issue that is always important and it speaks um, to all library types in um, the US. Thank you. And Cassie, are You're we welcome. there? I hope so. Am I there? We got you. <laughs> oh my, my gosh! I am. I, you're going to have to repeat the question because I was fine. just frankly trying to figure out why my my headset stopped working. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so, in your approximation, what's the most important New York-based issue to represent on ALA Council? Uh, wow, there's a lot. Um, I know uh, that Jen and Brian just spoke to uh, diversity in the profession, which I absolutely agree with. Uh, going back to my experience last summer 
and communities reflecting uh, or library staff reflecting the communities that they're working in, I think is a, is a very important piece of it. Um, and that PLA program to me seems to be a model and I, I'd love to be able to see that replicated in some way in New York State. And then uh, being in New York State, I would also say that federal funding is a really important issue um, that ALA needs, I mean, they do take it on, but continue to take it on when I don't know the exact percentage, but the majority of the funding for the New York State Library comes from federal funding. As we lose that, um, it just, it's, uh, it's a domino effect uh, all the way down to the systems and then into the individual academic school library systems and um, public libraries. Thank you, and we don't have any other questions, um, so we can call it an afternoon. I want to thank all three of you for being here today. I greatly appreciate it, and I know the NILA membership does as a whole. This is recorded, and it will be available to watch later, and I encourage everyone to register for the Counselor at Large School. That's going to be next Thursday, next Wednesday, excuse me. And thank you, everybody, again. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, Kelsey. Thank you, Kelsey. Thank you.